Do you want to know how to make your habits attractive? Mm, you're looking so gorgeous today. Yes, you are. Hey there, it's Natalie Sisson. In my last video, I talked about habit stacking and how I am using this morning and night to feel like a freaking rock star. And that is in this video that you might want to check out if you want to know all about habit stacking that I learned from my friend James Clear, who's just written a fantastic book called Atomic Habits. Highly recommend you pick it up. I actually listened to the book on Audible. I just love listening to audio books. I can do it while I'm out running or training or traveling and just really enjoy audio books. However, James has done a great Great job of creating all these awesome free templates and guides to go along with the book that you can download at a later date. So highly recommend you check it out. Hats off to James for writing this book. Really, really enjoyed it and learned a lot. So there are several laws that make up a great habit and for you to actually stick with habits to feel like you are winning at life. And the second law that James talks about is making it attractive. Most of the time when I've stopped doing a habit, it's because frankly, it's just really not that exciting to me, or it feels a bit painful, or it's a pain in the ass. So by making your habit attractive, this is going to stop you from avoiding doing that habit. And that's what we all want. We want to stick with things. And sometimes habits are going to be hard. But how James thinks that you're going to make them easier and easier for you to stick with is by making them attractive. Now, how do you do that? You use something called temptation bundling, which is when you pair something that you enjoy doing as a habit with something that you know you need to do. So here's an example. I really enjoy audio books. Uh, I didn't used to enjoy going out training all the time for triathlons. Well, that's not entirely fair, but it takes a lot of discipline and energy and effort. So especially when I was going out for a run or a ride that I knew was gonna be quite long, the first thing that I would do would be grab my headphones make sure I had an audio book on Audible loaded up. And then I was really excited to go out and train because I knew that I'd have company with me on the ride or on the run. And this is where I listen to Atomic Habits and Deep Work and The Barefoot Investor and so many audio books. I am just going through audio books like crazy right now and then coming home later and taking notes. So I paired running and cycling on days when I was feeling a bit more tired or less motivated was something that I really enjoyed doing. And instantly I was ready to rock it, go out the door and do that training and get to it. And also focus on a really good training session. Just because I was listening to a great book didn't make me just like, you know, meander all over the road. I was focused and I was there. And often those books were quite motivational. So as I was writing, I was really listening to them and taking it in and applying it in my brain. The second thing he suggests is that you join a culture where that habit is like a ritual for people, where it's really encouraged. So I guess an example of that for me is to join a triathlon club or to join a group of people who are committed to training. So that if I'm finding it hard to go out for a run or a swim, I get a training buddy, I join a little club and we all gather together and we go out and we hold each other accountable go and rock it and we support each other and if you're hanging out with people who are couch potatoes but you're trying to train for a marathon or a sporting event then you might want to check who you're hanging out with and join a group of people who are going to be your biggest advocates and supporters and hold you to it on the days when you feel like meh I want to be on the couch with my friends. The third thing James suggests to do is to create a motivation ritual, which is where you do something you enjoy immediately before a difficult habit. So the example I just gave is similar to that, but let's say you want to do a big writing session and you're not looking forward to it and you've committed to doing it every single day to create a writing habit. So you do something you enjoy right before that. You'd make a fresh pot of coffee or perhaps you would sit in a um, massage chair that you have at home or perhaps you'd watch one of your favorite comedians on YouTube right before doing that difficult habit. So it's like the trigger that says you get a little dopamine hit doing what you like before you go into the thing that you find difficult. It's ultimately over time going to make that habit less difficult because your brain is rewiring itself to go, oh, awesome, I get to do this thing I love, and then I get to do this other thing that feels more doable now because I've just enjoyed this first part of the habit. 
Does that make sense? So try it out next time that you've got something that you just aren't sticking to, a habit that you know is difficult for you. It might be an exercise habit, it might be writing, it might be public speaking, and attach something that you really, really enjoy doing immediately before it. You may want to dance before you jump on stage. There are all sorts of rituals that people create, and James talks about them in the book, that will make you more inclined to turn up and do the work and the stuff that's difficult when you most need to. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you're gonna take a look at some of your habits that you really, really wanna establish this year and look at habit stacking and making them attractive to actually get you past that line of, oh, I didn't get around to it, or oh, I missed it once again. And one final tip that I really love is the simplicity of just a calendar or a piece of paper or a whiteboard where you literally put crosses on each day you do that habit. And it's just such a simple visual reminder that you are winning. And there is a lot to be said in the research in James' book that you just don't want to break the chain. So once you've got a couple of ticks or crosses or whatever works for you or love hearts or gold stars, I used to get gold stars in school when I had done like my piano lesson or I'd practice piano or I'd done PE and you used to get these gold stars on this simple piece of paper and it was really motivating and you never ever wanted to break that chain. You just wanted all these gold stars so that at the end of the month, you look like bling. And this is exactly what James is talking about in the book. Give yourself a visible reward of being able to say, yep, I did that today. Or yes, I nailed it. And you'll be much more likely to stick with the habit and routine for 30 days plus. So give it a shot and let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this, please hit subscribe for fresh vlogs twice a week from yours truly.